Hi, good morning. Welcome. This is John Gormley, your host on this week of Cyber Shorts. This is a new segment uh, complementing our current podcast about the corner of cyber and blog. Uh, this week will be covering a very interesting topic that uh, I, a lot of my clients that I write for have asked me to kind of start doing some more digging on is around composable enterprise architectures. And what's interesting about this technology or this kind of architectural technology is that it really kind of bases the idea of two things that are very important to organizations today. Number one, rapid deployment of applications, which I know we've heard this before, particularly around digital transformation. But what's interesting about composable architectures is that it's really kind of based solely upon the idea of taking components or capabilities from different, let's say, vendors, as an example. And think of this as like a Lego bricks type of analogy and the ability to say, I'm going to take this capability or this functionality from this particular vendor, and I'm going to combine it with this vendor, combine with this vendor, and then I'm going to use APIs in order to try to interoperate these components together. So the idea of this means that basically an organization that has a, an initiative can rapidly capability build themselves based on that capability, a functionality or an application or a system. Um, and obviously this sounds you know, really great. And it's something I know Gardner has been putting out there for, for quite a while, that this really is kind of the next level. I know McKinley wrote, McKinsey wrote recently in one of their publications that organizations that do not adopt some compositable architecture in the next few years may not exist as a company. Well, I don't tendably look at it from that level. As most of you know me, I look at it more from a cybersecurity side of this. So when someone mentions to me that I'm going to take the best of what vendors can offer, well, that reminds me a lot of the old defense in depth strategy or the best of breed strategy we used to implement many years ago in cyber, where we took the best firewall, we took the best um, IPS device, endpoint security, we took the best monitoring system, and somehow we took the best networking component we put this whole thing together and said, we now have a best of breed architecture and we now have two of them in order to have high availability and of course, disaster recovery. And we realized that later we ended up having to have more people to support it. Operational costs were completely you know, out of, out of, out of wing. And more importantly, what also made it very difficult was when one vendor decided to upgrade their code and not tell the other vendors that, hey, I just did this change and suddenly everything didn't work. So what's interesting, though, about doing this on an application layer, which is what Composable is really talking about, is the idea that you can have code capabilities combined with using APIs and knowing that as long as the APIs are still functional and everyone's using the same capabilities and the code strains don't change that much, then in theory that the idea of building capabilities and functions using this rapid deployment method should not have very much concern or challenges. However, from a cybersecurity side, not a development of rapid or time to market side, but from a cybersecurity side, I did not read one blog, one content on the internet that talked about here is the proper way to do this in a secure manner, which assuming that everyone is going to do some form of secure SDLC model, or they're going to do some form of pen testing or some form of application security in the rapid deployment, very similar to like more of an agile or doing a DevOps agile strategy. I did not see a lot of that in the content that I was reading. So I'm actually going to follow up today's cyber short video with a blog uh, on my blog on LinkedIn, talking more in detail about how people can apply more security when considering a costable type of architecture. I do agree in principle that the constable strategy going forward into 2020 thing is vital. Obviously, the, the people factor is still in play, getting access to, you know, experienced resources anywhere in the world, consistent resources that know or have experience in, in application development of software engineering is still a challenge. But in parallel to that, the cybersecurity market also has the same parallel challenges as well as finding qualified people to work in SecOps, DevOps, and now app dev security uh, as well. So I would caution organizations that obviously are considering looking at combustible strategy, and many of them have already done so, maybe in more of a greenfield opportunity. Sure, it does, it does make some sense. But what more importantly, what I did not again see, as I mentioned earlier, was there didn't seem to be a whole lot of cybersecurity DNA built into this. Uh, and that really is obviously causing concern. I, I've been around the space as many as you've been for, for quite a many years. And I do remember defense and depth strategies and security. I do remember people going through best of breed. And then I went back to where I remember people were going all in one. And I think this strategy is interesting because it does not advocate for all in one. It advocates for getting the best capabilities from different vendors and utilizing an API structure in order to make the interoperation work. Ugh. 
Well, so I guess in the end of the day, it's really going to come down to is do you really need the application out that quickly? Are you expecting the application to survive after you have done the deployment? And most important of all, will this particular rapid application have any imbalance on your current compliance mandates? Which is, again, was another very alarming part of when I was doing my research on this subject matter for clients was they asked me, you know, on a few occasions, could you please write a blog around this and make sure that this has some relevance to compliance? Did not find a lot of content out there, which I guess is a good thing. It means people like me have to write it, which is great. But I think the point that was a little bit alarming to me was that looking at this capability, it reminds me a lot of during my earlier career where I was working for a financial services firm. And it was sort of this idea that somebody came up on a Wednesday and said, hey, we should do this. This, this, should, this is going to make us a lot of money. And we need it out on the Internet by Friday. And, and obviously, you know, powers to be, someone found a way to write it. And this was what we call, you know, the you know, kind of like the closet IT, where you now have people or shadow IT, shadow IT, where you now have shadow IT creating their own capabilities, their own software in-house on a database, sitting on a server underneath somebody's desk and somehow got it on DNS and threw it out there on the internet. And by Friday, it became a product. Well, by Saturday morning, when the product was breached and no one knew what to do about the breach and didn't understand until the following week how much data really was exposed, it showed that because the, the, the need of rapidness outweighed the need for it to be secure. Now, the good news is in 20 years since that happened, there's been lots of great changes. A lot of companies have implemented a secure SDLC strategy, but this sort of looking at composable kind of takes back a little bit saying, okay, we're now we're back to rush to market, we're back to time to market. And, and most important of all, we're back to, okay, yeah, we're, we just need to do this because if we don't, we're not going to survive. Well, yeah, but you're not going to survive a cybersecurity breach either. So as you sort of have, have kind of seen, you know, a lot of organizations have defaulted to things like cybersecurity insurance in order to offset their losses. Well, as part of that process that people have discovered is that the cybersecurity insurance carriers come in and they do their audits and their due diligence and they stumble across things like unsecured applications, unpatched applications, unprotected hosts, and poor architectural designs as a reason not to renew people's cybersecurity insurance or in many cases not even cover the actual losses. So if I was a hacker and I found that somebody was using a compositable strategy, per se, to be able to do rapid deployment and organizations are going out and advertising that in some capacity, obviously, I would love to potentially go after that. Because, again, knowing that there's going to be holes, there's going to be vulnerabilities, there's going to be the need to try to get the product or capability out faster. And obviously, that is just pickings for most hacking and hacking and cybersecurity target you know, hackers out there is they're looking for those types of platforms. They're looking for ways of saying, boy, they, they just need to get that thing out there. Perfect, here's my rootkit, and now I can do some exciting things. But I guess the, you know, the lesson we learned here is that it, have we moved to point in 2023 with Web 3.0 coming, obviously blockchain, you know, coming in a very big way to a lot of you know, capabilities in firms uh, globally. And of course, you know, if you've ever vacationed in Northern Virginia and you see the 31 data centers that are being built by Dallas Access Road, you can tell that there is going to be a boom of growth in 2023. So the need to try to get applications out the need to be able to get them in people's hands and make them financially productive. And more importantly, from a sustainability model, how well can you sustain what you have just built? Can you do a CI, CD type model? Can you have the agility necessary to do updates? Do you have the ability, and I know I beat the dead horse here, the ability to make sure that you are cybersecurity aware and protected when you're going through this rapid capability? So look forward to my blog coming out. I'm going to be writing about next week. It's going to be called Security with Constable Architectures. I do think it's a do necessary need. I, I do encourage people to, obviously, for everything that's being developed, make sure that the C-levels understand that the CISO, every CIO, every director of IT, every director of security needs to have a seat at the table as somebody's mentioning Constable Architectures Design. Thank you again very much for being on this week's Cyber Shorts. I am John Gromley. I'm your host. Thanks again, and have yourself a wonderful, wonderful, safe week.